In, uh, in the show. Um, the, the first one um, is um, it's called Big Stack and it's um, basically a, a stack of amplifiers that is sort of uh, akin to a Tower of Babel or, or, um, or an aerial antenna and um, it's sort of like the found sculpture of, of, of say rock and roll and um, I, I guess you could you could almost say it's sort of a phallocentric sort of sculpture, like a tower, you know, this sort of like babbling sort of thing that sort of maybe references like the internet where everybody is speaking but nobody's listening. And um, I mean, it, you could relate it to music, say, in so in so far as like like Leonard Cohen's uh, Tower of Song, and it also maybe relates to a, a personal incident when um, you know back in my youth when I. I was watching this band Gun Club and this uh, uh, mercurial lead singer Jeffrey Lee Pierce, uh, the late Jeffrey Lee Pierce, happened to climb up, clamber up a 20 foot tall stack of wobbly amplifiers in the middle of this song called Sex Beat and threw himself off of the tower of wobbly amplifiers, landed on his feet and kept singing and it was almost like a, a magical experience. So I think I conflated all those those things into this particular object, and um, and it's ten feet tall. And then the other two works, uh, which might look a little um, different, is a uh, raven, and then next to it is um, a, a piece called Big Eye. And um, and you could almost say that like like there's a lot. The raven's head is composed of a multitude of tiny eyes. And it's almost like as if the piece next to it is like a detail of that piece blown way up to the point where one goes into the iris, one goes deep into another space. And so um, it becomes like the, the kind of inner macro dimensions of the, uh, of, of the critter and becomes like outer space and the void. <laughs> My artwork is is really an amalgamation of all my personal interests and hobbies and, and, and obsessions and fascinations, and um, some of them are, are, are rather contrary to one another to, to some people's minds, but not to mine. And um, and, and, and as a matter of fact, I, I like to take a lot of like maybe oppositional ideological positions and almost in ideologically different ideas and put them together in my work and let them battle it out, uh, let them have a sort of ideological fight, you know, um, which is sort of like the kind of conversation that we have in, in, the, in the world or like the conversation that's going on in my brain. But uh, I don't put anything in the work that I'm not inherently interested in. Um, and, but I do as a person try to remain curious and I try to let the world in and then as it filters out of me, it becomes, it becomes art. You know, I was initially uh, very influenced by conceptual art, which kind of led me uh, cerebrally to make certain idea, to try to make manifest certain ideas I had about perception. Like, um, and then sort of uh, maybe conflate those ideas with things that had happened to me personally, but bracketed by the social. You know, in other words, I didn't really want my work to be this sort of solipsistic sort of, um, you know, uh, closed down personal thing that nobody else could, could understand. Like, I always wanted to, like, always bracket it with social history. So, you know, when I was looking at this notion of, like, what are paintings and what can paintings do, um, you know, I had abandoned paintings when I was it when I was younger because of the burden of history. I didn't know what, how to make a painting. And then, um, and then I, you know, I started thinking about this pre-modernist ideal of paintings as windows to other realities, this idea of losing yourself in this other space. And, um, and I started thinking that that really dovetailed quite interestingly with my own kind of like history of drug use, of like psychedelic drugs. And like some of the rhetoric around both like like this transcendentalist psychedelic drug culture 
and the sort of utopian sort of uh, ideals around art seemed amazingly similar. So I started playing and conflating those two things. And then from that point, from those ideas, like I started worming together all these various interests I had uh, in art history, and I didn't want it to stop at Duchamp. And uh, I mean, certainly there's pop in my work, and certainly, you know, there's Dada and surrealism, but I was also interested in trying to, like, you know, putting in, um, you know, there's like Rajasthani miniatures, there's Tibetan tankas, um, there's Renaissance um, figuration. Uh, obviously, Giuseppe Arcomboldo has been important. Um, so um, I try, and I'm even like throwing some expressionistic brushwork in there in the background of my Raven. So I'm, I'm trying to like heap it up with as much sort of like simultaneous art histories as I can. Again, with this sort of ideological war. I mean, they're not necessarily, I don't think of them as antagonistic. I think of them all as manifesting sort of human desire. And they're all from coming from the same place, but some more reductivist people may not agree with me.